Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. But tonight's picture, instead, is from the United Kingdom. Yes, once again from our dear British friends from across the big water. It's from 1947, Odd Man Out, starring James Mason, Kathleen Ryan, Robert Newton, and Cyril Cusack. And tonight's picture is the screen debut of Kathleen Ryan. Now, the picture here is very Irish themed, so I thought it would be appropriate, you know, for the upcoming St. Patrick's Day holiday. But when I say Irish themed, I don't mean in a happy-go-lucky kind of way. No, it, it, it's not, you know, leprechauns and pots of gold and always after me lucky charms. No, it's none of that. It is much more serious toned than that. Uh, it concerns IRA, it, it, it's about IRA activity up in Northern Ireland, and specifically Belfast. Uh, and because of the political tensions and sensibilities surrounding that, uh, what the Irish they call the Troubles, uh, because of all of that, they had to write the script very carefully so that the film would be okayed by the British Board of Film Censors. Now, once we get going, you'll see their black certificate in the opening, you know, from the from the film censor board. And there's even uh, a text scroll, you know, just prior to the start of the film that kind of explains all of those sensitivities. But it's still Irish themed, so to celebrate, I decided to go with Bush Mills. This, uh, and, and this is their Black Bush label. Bush Mills, it's a whiskey from Northern Ireland, but it's from the small village of Bush Mills, which is located at the far western end of Northern Ireland. Uh, it's not close to Belfast. And the town of Bush Mills, uh, it's really a village. <laughs> it's not a big place at all, but that's where their distillery is. And I got a chance to tour their distillery. It was about a year and a half ago. Uh, made a few trips up into Northern Ireland, you know, three or four times. And uh, it really was something because <laughs> you whiskey lovers out there, I'm going to make you jealous. We stayed at an Airbnb that where you're sitting on the back deck, I was overlooking the distillery compound. You know, the distillery building itself, some of the auxiliary buildings, and that huge stockyard filled with whiskey barrels. Now, they were empty. That's where they store them until they fill them with whiskey. But I'm just looking at all that. And <laughs> I just thought I'd take this moment to make you a little jealous. But uh, tonight's picture here, uh, this film won the first ever BAFTA Award. Uh, the BAFTA Awards, they're like the Academy Awards for the UK. And this picture won, uh, it, it was won the award for Best British Film. Now, the picture itself here, it's about a leader of the IRA operating in Belfast, and he's hiding out in the home of his girlfriend and her mother while he's planning a heist that will help fund the organization. And, of course, the heist goes haywire, and he is severely wounded in the process. And now that he's on the lam, the police and his girlfriend are sweeping the city looking for him. So, from 1947 and the United Kingdom, odd man out. Tally ho!
Hello, Benny. Anyway, I know you're quite clear up to that point. After that, I should turn to the left and make your own way to the main street. Then you can take any of those turnings to the right that'll bring you out of the back of Northumberland Street post office. Then drive straight across the parade ground and make for the north side of the park. How is it, Johnny? Fine. The orders haven't been changed. We can go ahead. The weather's good. It'll snow later on, but we'll be back before that. I've been telling the others, Dennis, we'll go the way we planned. Across Queen's Bridge, down the main street, Bedford Street, coming to Shaftesbury Square. It's a bit longer, but it brings the car into a better position, facing the broad end of the street. There's no hurry. It's time for a cup of tea. Is the car all right? She's okay. Is it a nice clean one? Hope you got decent tires on her. I, I picked out a good one. One of these days you might have a car of your own. <laughs> I never known that. Wouldn't mind having this one. How much petrol? Three gallons. Half would do us. You never know. We might have to. Not at all. We'll be back here by five. Well, I'll have the car out where we said at twenty minutes two. I'll be on the bridge. I'll be at the car sales room. Got some tea, Granny. Everything's settled. Yes, we'll have to hurry. They're leaving soon. I, I heard that. You hear everything, don't you? Well, what I don't hear, I can put together. Pour in the bit now. Will he be coming back again, my darling? Ah, uh, sure, I helped to bring you into the world, and I've watched you grow up. And I know what's in your heart for that boy up there. Maybe you know what's in his heart, too. Oh. Did you send me coupons for me? Oh, there's no time to talk about that now. Ah, oh, for your impotence now, the price has gone up. I want three bob a piece for the clothing ones. You can have the meat ones thrown in if you'll just give me a few points for me sweets. We're three district managers coming to make a weekly report. Friday's always their day. What do district managers talk about? Oh, <laughs> goods, goods on order, export market. You work it out. Well, I'll be along now, Johnny. I'll be where we said with the prom. There's nothing changed. No, we'll be there on time, Maureen. When we give you the money, you're to take it to Hannigan's, you know. He'll distribute it over the weekend. Aye, right, right. After this, you won't need to worry until your man comes out of prison. A slice of the party cake? A few crumbs of that won't go amiss. Well, good luck. Good luck. Good luck, Maureen. Well, we'd better be moving, too. Ah, uh, here, hold hard for a second. I shall wait here for you till you come back. Nolan. Oh. Murphy. You've got to look like businessmen, you know. I wouldn't wear that if I were you. It's all right, I've got my coat. Go easy with those now. Well, anybody that asks for it can have it. Yes, but don't, uh, don't encourage them to ask. You haven't been mixed up in shootings before. You don't want to start now. Okay. See you later. Uh huh. Sure, I know. Good luck, boys. Good luck, Tara. Bye bye. Your. Your heart's not in this job, Johnny. Is it? I won't be sorry when we're back. You don't believe in it, then? I believe in everything we're trying to do. But this violence isn't getting us anywhere. You? We're sentenced to 17 years imprisonment for bringing guns and ammunition to the dumps. You talk about violence. In prison, you have time to think. If one of we could throw the guns away, make our cause in the parliaments instead of in the back streets. Look, Johnny. I've been in this house for six months since your escape from prison. It isn't the right kind of training for a job like this. You were in prison for eight months before that. It's over a year since you were able to get out and show your face in the streets. You're not fit to go right out on a job like this. Let me go. Let him go, Johnny. Do I look soft, then? Well, the men have noticed something. You've changed lately. They want me to go in your place. Don't they trust me? They trust you, all right, but... Dennis, I'm the leader of the organization in this city. I've spent months planning this raid to get the funds for all the things we need, for Maureen and her husband and the others. I've got my orders and I'll see them through. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. All right. 
I'll wait downstairs. You haven't drunk your tea, Johnny. Now, don't you start worrying about this business, Kathleen. It'll go fine. Thanks. Here. Johnny, you haven't told me if you're remaining here after the job's done. I'll be back for a while. But when the excitement ends, I'll make for the hills. There are friends up there. Shall I come and see you? Of course. Bring Granny. You know, you've been a great friend. Both of you. Putting up with me the way you have what I've been hiding here. You've been very... Well, you know what I mean. Johnny, will you ever be free? Someday, perhaps. I must go now. like a businessman. Now, don't worry, Catherine. We'll be back in no time. Johnny, you've been stuck in this house for six months. You're not fit for it. Let Dennis go instead. Will you be here when we come back? Jamison, seven. All right, you can lay off your work for a few minutes. Back up there. Back up. Sit down, sit down, make yourself comfortable. Shh, put your hands down.
We're not got these in yet. Take a chance to run back and look for him. We'll pick him up at the next corner. Drive on, Pat. Yeah, he'll be there ahead of us. Wait till you see now. Pat! Look, I'm not going to stay on here. It's too blooming risky. If you'd only back the car, Pat. Here's the street now. Keep a look out for him. Can you see him? No, he's not there. Get going. He'll make it all right. He'll take the straight cut to Kathleen's house. He'll get there. <laughs> Johnny, do you see? Um, well, they must have let go of him somehow, because when I looked around, I seen poor Johnny lying in the middle of the road. And I, I was just going to back the car, do you see? But before I could do a blooming thing, he was up and away down the street. Why did you let go of Johnny? Sure, he felt... Who said we let go? Well, can you deny it? I took us by the cold cart right enough, didn't I? And that was no easy thing, neither. And then, you see, when I made the turn... You took it too quickly. Uh, there was no need for such speed. And who let go of him? We told you to slow down so we could get him into the car. So I did slow down. When it was too late. Ah, I wish it were only for you, fellas. There wouldn't have been no need for me to slow down. Johnny was wounded. And at the turn, the car door gave Johnny's left arm a terrible crack and he shrieked and let go. You mean you let go? I must to do them. Go on, tell Dennis all about that. Yes, we saw Johnny lying in the crown of the road and we kept telling you to stop. Uh, yeah, you drove on. You went down for near a hundred yards. Which is it? Oh, now let them tell you what they did. So before we could get out, Johnny got up and cut down a turning. That's a lie, so it is. 
Do you fellas wouldn't stir out of the car? And they've given off oh, to me the enough. whole... Give us the facts and stop arguing. Well, where's Johnny? What's happened? Well, that's the whole of it for you now. They kept on shouting at me to pull up the car, and so I did pull up the car. And I wouldn't get out for him. Do you mean to say the three of you come back here without Johnny? I'm handling this. Without your chief? Ah, don't you be giving out of you. So what do you know about it? You weren't in the blooming car, were you? Look at them. Their own chief, and they left him in the lurch. Ah, oh, for heaven's sake, leave us alone. We've done the best we could. There's a wonder you wouldn't give us a drink or something. Give me the facts quickly. Maureen, bring us some tea. You drink a tea, is it? And dose of poison. an outing. I dreamt I'd escaped from prison. I dreamt I was on a raid, robbing a mill, funds for the organization. I remember I wasn't feeling so good. I hadn't felt so good ever since I'd escaped from here. After we'd done the job, there was a fight, and I shot a man. Yes, I dreamt I shot him. And I couldn't get onto the car. Somehow I couldn't get onto it. That's right, I was wounded in the left arm. I fell off and got up and ran along streets, afraid, afraid I'd killed them. And then I came to an air raid shelter, slumped down. Must have passed out. into this. Inquiry? Hey, what about? Well, we didn't finish it off right, did we? Oh, that's poor thanks, anyhow. I'd have to thank you for a hard night's work. Kathleen, will you get some bandages and things? We did our best. Well, what's the bandages for? I'm going down to look for Johnny. If the bandage on, they may take me for him. Well, should, should the police will be out in our hundreds, man. You wouldn't stand a chance. Armed raid on mill. Cashier killed in desperate struggle. Wounded assailant still at large. Killed? Poor Johnny. May heaven protect him. Listen, Pat, Nolan, and you, Murphy, get to headquarters at once. Go the back way. Dennis, can I go with you? No. Go to headquarters and tell them where I'm going so they can take action. Oh, right, Charles. Oh, good luck. Do you think this will deceive them, Dennis? If the police are around, they'll be looking for a man with a wounded arm. There's a chance they may take me for Johnny. I'll give them a run and lose them. That'll give Johnny a chance to get away. By yourself? They don't know he's down there. They don't know he fell off the car. Too many would attract attention. For a long time now, there's been no serious trouble. But tonight, the police will be everywhere. Take a few of the men with you. No, it's better this way. Take with you somebody you can trust. Come on, finish it. Dennis, let me come with you. Why? It's something I want to do. Something you want to do for yourself and not the organization. Sooner or later, the police will get him. Let me have him until then. As long as he lives, he'll belong to the organization. Always the organization. Yes. 
Wait here in case he gets back before me. Who's Granny? Stay here. Can I see your identity card, please? Teresa's? There'll only be trouble if we go there. Ah, yeah. Well, it's a place for us to go till the road's clear, isn't it? So what else are we to do? Aren't we going to headquarters? Ah, do you hear? And go on, you and try. Ah, come on, come on. Look, Pat, we're in trouble enough without asking for more. Now, for heaven's sake, man, she'll give us a drink or something, won't she? And a bite to eat, too, maybe. Oh, I don't know. She's tricky. I wouldn't trust her. Ah, look, she wouldn't trust nobody. Don't you worry. Steps, like at the mill. Yeah, you keep your mouth shut about that, do you hear me? Just keep your mouth shut. Ah, oh, Teresa, how are you? That darling and Murphy and Nolan, come in. Give me your coats and hats. Come into the warm and let me see you. I'm away to my mother's, Pat. Sorry, Teresa, I can't stay. Over here. Oh, he was in a terrible hurry. Actually, you know, Teresa, we, we, we just dropped in for a minute. But you're not thinking of leaving me without having a drink first. Give me your coat, shoot us barely six o'clock. And there's plenty of time now for something to eat, and the... Ah, oh, for your own peace of mind now, you better keep these handy. Come on into the warm and rest yourself.
fella came rushing out at us. He was shooting. He got Johnny in the left shoulder. We dragged him onto the running board, but he, he fell off before we really got started. Aye. And wasn't I saying to Dennis the whole time how Johnny wouldn't be fit for it? And Johnny? Have they found poor Johnny, tell me? Did the policeman find him, or is he safe with friends? Oh, he's safe enough. Somebody will get him out of it. And is he still down near the mill? Aye. Should Dennis will be able to get a hold of him somehow? Dennis, is it? There's no better man for a job like that. Drink up, Pat, darling. Ah, it's good stuff right enough. And sure all they'd give us is tea. Imagine tea. Where was that? Kathleen's house. A little music now will help to cheer you. I won't be five minutes in getting the meal ready. And then we put our feet onto the table and sit easy. Hey, I wonder what else we tell her. Well, whatever she knows now, because you told her. Because you told her all about Dennis going down to try and get Johnny out. Ah, oh, for heaven's sake, man, will you pipe down? Leave a fella take a drink in peace. Get out. Police headquarters. Inspector, this is Trace O'Brien speaking. For I know Teresa. I can know a bad sixpence. She's right as rain. <sighs> Plenty of dough, too. Here. Come on. Well, have a smoke. Go on, she's on the house. Oh, and I. Of course, as people says queer things about us sometimes, and they say queer things about me, too. Jealous, you know. Ah, should the town's full of it. Wait till you see now. She lived on a right good feed for us fellas. And a wee spot of booze, too. She's nothing but an old chancer. Mixed up in every dirty wreck in the city. Smuggling and money lending. Squeezing the blood out of the poor. You know that. Is that so now? And you can sit there warming your... Maybe we shouldn't have come. Take what's here and what else is to come. Then we better be going. Ah, uh, sure. You're always saying I'm a bad one and again the law. But I'm, I'm proving to you now that I'm always willing to help the police. I know, I know there's a big reward for this, but I, I'm not thinking of that. These boys have told me the whereabouts Johnny is and they're sending someone to look for him. We'll, we'll talk about that later on. Why? I wouldn't like any trouble in this house, Inspector. I see. Well, in a, in a few moments, I'll, I'll do my best to get them out of here. Yes. Thanks. Somebody ringing a bell. What are you afraid of? You brought us here. Stop, stop, listen. I'm off. I can stay where you are, don't be a fool. Ach, let her come in. Put away that thing, for heaven's sake, man. <laughs> You're a terrible man, there's no doubt about it. When you do nothing with that, you have a load of booze inside you. you leave us a spoonful. Come on, put your coat on, go on. If she starts any of her tricks, I'll make her pay for it, I'm telling you. Let her try. And yeah, when she comes in through the door, here's her. I'll give her a right good fright. <laughs> no, 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 go easy. Ah, shut up, shut up. Listen, boys, I've just got word in the telephone. The police are heading this way. Go before the police surround the house and lift you. If you don't go at this minute, things will go terrible bad for you. Oh, stop flourishing them things, me dear. Must I tell you what to do? Out you go now, bless you. Run for it. There are three steps. house and then they were shooting. And now there they are. Have the place cleared. Come on. Come on, Sally. You said on the telephone they'd send someone to look for Johnny McQueen. Hmm? Where are they looking for him? Go inside then and I'll join you.
Call the police. There's no police around here. Let's get some time. What? There is no police around here. Have you not seen them? All the police up at the end of the street. Mister, give us a Tommy. There's no police here now. Sure, there's hundreds of them up there looking for the fellow who killed the man at the mill. Give us a Tommy. But the fellow gone now. Did you see him? If you haven't got a Tommy, give us a cigarette. But they were here, weren't they? They were, but they all went back again. You sure? Quite sure. Mister, give us a Tommy. Did they uh, find the man who killed the fellow at the mill? No, they'll never find Johnny. He'll skip in the car. Mister, give us a Tommy. Are you sure they didn't find the man who killed the fellow at the mill? Quite sure. Do you know where Johnny is? No, we don't know. Did you see him? Did you? The man? Where was he? In the house. In the shelter. But which one? Show me. Take me to it. Come on, be a good girl. Show me. Did the police come and take him away? Did he run away? And the police never came. <laughs> Did I kill that man? Can you walk? Did I? Can you stand up? Damn! No. <laughs> Grip my arm. Can you walk? Come on, man. Come on. That's fine. You're not too bad at all. That's fine. Come on. You hear that? got to know you're down here. Listen, Johnny. I'll cut out to the left and draw them off that way. When you hear three shots and quick fire... Are you listening, Johnny? There's no time. When you hear three shots and quick fire, go out to the right and make for the house. That's a long way, Dennis. Johnny, it's our only chance. You'll get through. I'm away now, Johnny. Stand near the door here. Wait for three shots. Your coast will be clear and then be off. Good luck. Dennis, did I kill that fellow?
How are you, Mrs. McCluskey? How are they all? What's holding us up, Bill? What's holding us up? The car's overloaded. Chuck that bunch at the platform, Ernie. Take your face outside. And go back to your fields and things. Some of you can get out and push. Come on, clear the platform or else settle down for the night on the rails. I brought something hot for you. Here's the police. Earth in out the ranks. Come on in and warm yourself, constable. Come on, get up the car. Come on, get up the car. to get the ambulance for him. Leave me, I'll be all right. Well, will you come indoors? We know all about first aid. We were in the ARP. We've got bandages and everything. Can you come in? Maudie, I've got your umbrella. His arm's broken. Don't be so dramatic. Remember what the book said. Keep calm. Fetch a basin and a kettle of water. It was boiled for tea, so it's sterilised. His arm's broken, I'm telling you. Now, look here. Who did the first aid? You or me? I did all the ARP, same as you did, and I'm telling you his arm's broken. You know darn well you failed in your practicals, so get the boiling water and the first aid box. You'll see as soon as you take his coat off. You'll see. Oh, my goodness. Can I stay here? It's quiet. Maudie. This fellow's badly hurt. I told you so, his arm's broken. Maudie. Oh, help me off with his coat. Can you? That's right. There now, sit down. Give me the scissors. What are you going to do? Cutting a good jacket like that, you shouldn't do that without asking him. It's the way they told us up at the town hall. Maybe, but whose jacket is it? What troubles you make. I'm only warning you that it's his jacket. Look at your hands. Oh, what's wrong? Germs. Go and wash them. Oh, fuss, fuss, fuss. Anyway, they told us at those lectures that the air was full of germs. Can you sit up? I want to take your coat. Maudie. You see to it. Don't bring a doctor. I shouldn't like to interfere with that. We'll have to get him to the hospital. Of course. Look at him. Help me up. No, just lay quiet and we'll bring a doctor to you, son. No, help me. No, no, just lay easy. Rest. I must be on my way back. I can't stay here. They're waiting for me. Get a glass of water. 
Now listen, son. You've been badly hurt by that lorry. I understand for the doctor in the ambulance. No, don't do that. And there's a someone we can fetch to help you. Your wife, maybe. Or friend. If you sent to her, she might. If she could, she would. Is it your wife, son? <sighs> Who, then? Some friends. Well, where do they live? I'll send Maudy for them. We're new to this town, but we'll find them somehow. I'll just slip on my coat. Where do they live? What's the address? I can't bring them out tonight. Why should I be the one to bring you in? And what will my husband say when he sees you? Give us a hand up from this couch and I'll go. Stay there. What'll I do with you? Said in the papers that he was wounded and got away. You're right, it's him. Chief of the organization. Did that fellow die? Did I kill him? Rosie, what will we do with him? I can't hand him over to the police. Not as he is. Lying there near dead. And what can I, Rosie? There's a reward out for that fella. A thousand pounds. I wouldn't lay a finger on it. No more would I, Rosie. There's Tom. What'll Tom do? Tom will do his duty. He'll go to the police. Not thinking of the reward or anything, but sort of putting himself in the way of getting it. No, Rosie. Bit late tonight. Got stopped by the police at the end of the road. This mill business. Tom. There's something I... We found this fellow outside. What's happened to him? Come here. I'll tell you. Listen, Tom. We've just been out for a few minutes, getting the rations. Who is we... that fellow? It's Johnny McQueen, the man the police are looking for. I know, Tom. Well, you can take him, put it back where you fetched him. We can't do that, Tom. Him lying in our parlour. How did he get here? He was laying on the road. What's it matter? He's here, isn't he? And did any of the neighbours see him no. coming here? Are you sure about that? Quite sure. Rosie, do you realise who he is? That's the chief of the organisation. The police are out in hundreds looking for it's him. It's what he is now that I'm thinking about. Aye, and I'm thinking about the decent man he killed. I have no pity for those fellows shooting at police in the dark, murdering innocent men at their work. But he's dying now, Tom. Let me send Maudie for some of his friends. His friends, woman? Are you mad? How could we get them through the police court? You wouldn't treat a dying dog the way you're asking me to treat a him. A dog is the friend of man, Rosie. Are those fellows out there? I friends? don't know, Tom. Maybe not. He's not long for this world, and I don't like to be hard on him. Call the police, then, or send for the doctor and get the fellow taken to hospital. Not letting a dying man have a bit of peace seems hard. His sense... His sense is cruel sometimes. I respect the law. Rosie, I know what the men in my shed would say. I tell you, there's a police cordon round here. We'll be in it, too. All right, then. Put him out. You're the master here. Shh. Settled for you, and you won't have to worry. What you going to do? Open the door, and I'll go out and never trouble you again. 
Here, hold on a minute. Close the door when I'm gone. And forget me. Chum, want to get in? There's no driver. Come on, Harry, it's half past ten. No, no, I think the chum's out or something. God, he's tight. Tight? Oh, yeah? Let's have a sniff. Oh, lovely. You're right, he's had a drop. Drop? Fuck it, fool. Uh, ask him where he got it. <laughs> Where'd you get it, mate, eh? That all right, mate? Okay. Look out, oh, there's our tram. Cards. Well, what's the matter? That chap trying to get out of the town. Well, oh, don't blame him. I've been trying to get out for five years, no? Have you not caught him yet? Not yet. I think he's out of the district. Who have you got in the back? In the back? <laughs> Johnny. All right, Jen. On your way, on your way. Get on with it. Get up. In, but don't talk. Like some poor old creature that hasn't got a bit of spirit left in her. Sure, I've seen the time when I could hold a dozen of them with me eloquence. Now give them a taste of silence instead. There's a gun upstairs. I'd better get rid of it. We've orders to search your house. Well, come in and get on with it. Who are you? I live here. Who occupies this room? My father. Wait downstairs. Ah, sure, it's a fine, brave sight, you are, James. They'll never think of searching me. Where is he? My father's out. I wasn't asking you about your father. Come on, come on, I know they've been here. Smoking cigarettes and drinking tea, the whole bunch of them. I had friends in to see me. The fellows who raided the mill. You were all wondering how you could find Johnny McQueen. It was about Johnny. I can tell you nothing. You were making plans how you could find him. 
That's the truth now, isn't it? What do you want in this house? He's gone too far this time for any of you to help him. Finish your work here and get out and leave us in peace. We're not after him for taking a shot at us or for blowing out the windows of a police barracks with explosives. This time, he has shot and killed a man. You know what that means. It's his concern. And yours. I'm not responsible for him. You're responsible for what goes on in this house. Now, I warn you, if there's any evidence found here, it will go very hard with you, unless you help us now. What do you want me to say? I want the truth, that's all. I want to know where Johnny is. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. There's nothing upstairs, Ed. Take a look around here. Stand up, old girl. Give them to me. Them's my sweets. All right, you can sit down now. What is that you're wearing? Belongs to my father. He hasn't lived here for two years or more. Put it round me sometimes when I'm cold. Are you often cold? You shouldn't be with the crowd always in the house. These didn't help, Johnny. Oh, Dennis. All right, I'll join you later. I searched this house and found nothing. I found all that I came to find. The bandages and the jacket, is it? More than that. But there was nothing more. There was. Something that you couldn't hide. I'm not afraid because of that. He belongs to the law now. It might be easier for you if you could bring yourself to realize that. If you don't and you try to help him, You'll be in trouble. Stay out of this business. That wasn't a bad fella as them fellas goes. He spoke fair. Give it to me, Granny. There was decency in him. He spoke sense. Give me the revolver. And what he said was true, darling. Let me have what I want. Ah. Sure, you'll never find Johnny. I've seen the men go out the same as he did, and I've seen the women take off to go and look for them, but they never found them. Stay here, darling. Sure, where's the sense in yous running towards trouble when you know you can't mend it? Look at me there. That was me on my wedding day. I was 19 then and as lovely as yourself. I had the fine looks the same as you have them now. I had the boys admiring me. There was Huey Fitzpatrick, he wanted to marry me, so he did. He was a rebel on the run and was never seen again. Did I go out to look for him? I did not. I stayed and had my life. And grand times I had, with Frankie and the rest of them saying I was an angel of God. Grand times, thanks be to God. And the voices of the fine boys singing the songs. And I'd 11 children, so I had. Fine boys and girls, all of them. Come, Frankie, and the spirit of them. Hello again. Now, a little trivia for you here. Uh, the, the street gang of little boys that we saw, you know, they were teasing the cops and making fun of them. 
those little boys were recruited as extras from the for, for the film from the St. Patrick's Boys Home right there in Belfast. And, and another thing we see here uh, throughout the picture, you maybe have picked up on this, we only see, they only refer to it as the organization or the group. We don't hear the actual word or the initials IRA. That's probably one of those elements that was necessary. You know, they had to change that in order for the film to be okayed by the censors. But <laughs> that was good, that part where he gets into the back of that horse-drawn cab, and then the driver comes along, gets in, and he takes off not knowing he's there. And he stopped at the checkpoint, and the cops say, Who you got in the back? And the guy just goes, Johnny, <laughs> thinking he was making a joke, and the cops took it the same way and just waved him on. <laughs> you know, that's something that struck me as odd here, was, you know, this picture is from 1947, and it seems set contemporary to the time. That seems like an awful late year to have a horse-drawn cab. Now, I don't know if that truly was authentic to the era, or if they just threw that in as an artistic license thing, you know, just to make the film more interesting. I'm just not sure. But for the cars, <laughs> that car that we saw, uh, the, the one that they used in the robbery, you know, the one that Johnny eventually fell out of, that car was a 1935 Hillman 2070. It was a mid-priced car for the era. Now, they typically came with separate front seats, you know, much like the bucket seats we have in cars today, except for the family saloon model. Only the family saloon model had a bench seat, you know, for the front. And that's the model that we see here in tonight's picture. Now, Kathleen, Sol uh, Kathleen Ryan, and she's playing the role of Kathleen Sullivan, you know, very similar to her real name. <laughs> well, she was born in Dublin, Ireland, uh, came from a somewhat prominent family there. Uh, in fact, uh, her father passed away when she was only 11 years old, and it was shortly after he was just elected to Ireland Senate. Now, in her early stage work, uh, she was with the Dublin Abbey Players, which did act at the famous Abbey Theatre there in Dublin, Ireland. And in fact, uh, here in Dublin, Ohio, our own theatre here is named the Abbey Theatre in honour of the original one there in Ireland. Now, she only appeared in 12 films over a 10-year period. It was from 1947 to 1957. And like I told you earlier, tonight's was even her screen debut. Now, of those 12 films, all of them were British except for two American films. One was 1950's The Sound of Fury, which is also known by its alternate title, Try and Get Me. I brought you that one some time back, and in fact, that was the print I was able to find was under the title Try and Get Me. The other American film she was in was 1955's Captain Lightfoot. She was in that with Rock Hudson and Barbara Rush. Now, Kathleen, she passed away in 1985 there in Dublin, Ireland at the age of 63, and she was buried along with her parents uh, there at, it's at Glasnevin Cemetery in Dublin. Well, let's get back to Odd Man Out. Cab, sir. Cab, sir. Cab, sir. See you home, madam. Cab! 
Sir. Right, sir. Yes, right. We will right away. Come on, get up. There's somebody inside, Jack. You already got a fare. The man's drunk. I'll soon get the heads and tails of this. Come on, aren't you get getting? Take your hand away. Won't you? Did I drive you through the police court in my car? Carry on the way you're going. No, I can't, man. I can't. Listen, I'm not for you. I'm not against you. But I can't afford to get mixed up in this. Hey, you! Come on, get along there. Yeah, yes, Constable. Right away, Constable. Just in a moment. Right Listen, son. If you get back to your friends, you'll tell them I helped you. Me, Jim Jimmy. But if the police catch you, you won't mention my name, huh? I saw you, Jim. Is he hurt, Bob? You keep out of this shell. Get away out of it. Come on. City. But if they don't get to him, will you help? Oh, it's an awful risk, Kathleen. What time do you say you'll be late? Soon after 11. But it's only 8 now. Yes, but where is he? Well, I'm going to Father Tom's. He might know something. Yes, he usually hears things. Now, listen. If you do find him, don't bring him the way you came. You won't get through. Bring him by Dock Square. I'll see that the gate at the foot of the clock tower is open. Good. I'll be here before 11. for a little walk, I suppose, hmm? Well, I'm glad you're keeping out of this business.
A nice place, Dad. I thought you might have stayed. You're wasting your time. Father Tom can't help you with a thing like this. You're going in, then? Yes. Why don't you go home? There you are. Go in if you want to. But you're too late, miss. Is Father Tom in? He is, but I think there's somebody with him still. Will you come in a moment? You came to ask me about Johnny McQueen. Do you know him, Father? I taught him as a child. I know them all. I was expecting people to come inquiring about him. I've another visitor, a poor man whose little bird is sick. We better hear what he's got to say first. Hmm? And this is my other visitor. His name is Shell. And you're me? Kathleen Sullivan. How, how are you, miss? Shell is having trouble with his bird. Do you see this wee creature? He's a rare one. It's a budgie. There are thousands of them. Well, sure, there's millions of men and women. But there's rare ones among us. Like this bird. You know, this fella's a chief. Or a devil of a fella. Always making mischief. Just like uh, some fellas does. What's his name? Me and Lukey and Tober. Uh, them's the friends that I live with. The three of us, uh, we call them Johnny. Of course, uh, I must tell you, Mr. Johnny is, well, he's what you call a menace to society. That's why me and Lukey and Tober, we has a rule saying that the door of his cage must be kept shut. Because there's other birds in my room besides Johnny. And he can't stand them and they can't stand him. You know, there's a sort of a difference of opinion like between them. Hey, you hear that? The bird's almost human. How bad is he? I tell you, he, he gets out of his prison, uh, his cage, I mean, and off he goes. But he's back now. You have him there. Tell us what happened when he got away. Murder. Do you, do you see his left wing? It's hurt. Oh, poor fella. Oh, sure he gets out and does mischief. Killing one fella in the struggle, but the, the one he killed contrived to sort of give him a dig. And there it is. The spot of blood. How did you manage to capture him again? Oh, oh I, I got word from a friend and got my hands on the bird. Oh. And he's hurt bad. How is he now? Well, uh, this corner that he's laying in, it's not the, not the sort of place for him to sit up proper. Perhaps he's not long for this world. There isn't a sound out of him. If he's as badly wounded as that, perhaps it'd be better to let nature take her course. Well, now, Father Tom, I'd hate for to let the bird slip out of my grasp. Well, it's a, it's a hard world, Father. I don't mind telling you. And I want the bird because there's money in him. Ah, uh, my son, it's a hard world. A very hard world. Oh, it's fierce. Of course, I know there's praying and all that. But if I don't take what's coming to me as chances, I'm finished. And just starve. That's a fact. Mm-hmm, poor fellow. What will you do with him? Where is he? But sure, I've told you. I just uh, want to get him out of the corner and give him something to put him right. And after that? Oh, well, maybe you don't believe me, but I'm telling you there's lots of people that pay me a grand price for Johnny. The police? I'm not referring to them. I'm thinking of the friends that he must have. Where is he? Well, uh, don't blame him. He's got to live. But asking a price for him, not telling us where he is. But, but sure, I've told you where he is. He's in the corner. If he knows where he is, we must trust him. Tell me now, what price are you asking for him? Well, I could, uh, I could get a thousand for him. <laughs> you foolish man. Money wouldn't make you happy. Well, I'm only telling you what I could raise on him if I had a mind to. Well, we'll get you a little something, but not a thousand pounds. Why all that money? It'd be a terrible burden. First of all, where is he? Go and bring him to us. That's what I was waiting to hear. But, of course, uh, Father, it won't be... Uh, won't be an easy job, you know. No, but you'll try. Oh, I will, I will, I will. 
But you know, Father, I'm uh, still thinking and wondering uh, how much... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a poor man. I've got no money. Oh, oh that's bad. Oh, well, I should maybe the young lady here. She could lend you a bit. I'm uh, sure she couldn't. Oh. Well, listen. The fellow was telling me I hear tell that uh, his reverence, the Pope, is queer and rich. <laughs> blather. Is that a fight? It is just blather. Aye, right, well then, uh, how do you suggest that we should settle this matter decently? If you like, I try to inspire in you a precious particle of faith. Faith? Would it, um, pay the rent for me and help me to get a pint of stout now and then? Shell, you and I are poor, Ben. We must live the best we can. I've been poor longer than you have. Bring back Johnny, and I'll show you the way to get real riches. We'll talk about the way to live, and then there'll be a fine reward for you, Shell. It's uh, still the bit of faith. Now, but, but what is the value of it in hard cash? Though? Trust me. Bring Johnny back, and we'll settle it all. Now, will you? I will. I will. I, oh, no, it's no, no, I'll, I'll bring him. You stay here. What, my child? Father, when shall returns, give Johnny to me. Not for me to give him to anyone. Why are you having him brought here? Shell says he's wounded. Maybe dying. I want to hear his confession and do what I can to comfort his soul. And afterwards? I'll try to persuade him to give himself up. Father. What do you want me to do, child? Help us to take him back to the boys so that he kill more people and defy the authority. So that I can take him away from all of them and be with him. You will never hear of him again. I give you my word. But you couldn't hide him for long. I've done it before. Ah, this is different. He's killed a man, and he must pay the penalty. Rather than that, I'd take his life myself. Child, you mustn't say such things. Why, Father? The law would do it for revenge. I only do it out of pity. Have you thought what had happened to you? I shall go with him. Kathleen, you don't know what you're saying. If he's arrested, I'll have to live while he's on trial, while he's been executed, and afterwards for all the years of my life. Kathleen, there's a little glove somewhere for putting on the coals. Can you see it? Listen to me, Kathleen. When people are in deep trouble, they often say to me they'll kill themselves. And they mean it at the time. But when everything seems lost, God gives them the courage to win. It's not for myself that I'm afraid. Why then? I'm afraid for him if he should die alone. When men were against him, I protected him. If I go with him, Perhaps I can protect him again. Listen to me, Kathleen. This life is nothing but a trial for the life to come. You're being tested now. And if you wish to get real happiness for Johnny and yourself, you will face your ordeal and win your own heaven. You're wise, Father. Good, I know. I want to listen to you, but I can't. I can't take it in. I only know that what I feel is stronger than my religion, stronger than myself. Kathleen, where's your faith? My faith is in my love. You have neither the power nor the right to do this thing. I believe that what I intend to do is good.
you see who came in? Yes. I'll give you my shirt. Hapen's change. Mr. Fancy, could Keep I? quiet. Who is that fellow just come in? It's Johnny. Shh, then. Get on the work. Mr. Fancy, let Charlie chuck him out before there's trouble here. And what do you think would happen to me if his friends found out? Eh? Well, well what will we do then? You carry on. Now, come on. Take this and get out of here. I need to stay and rest. I'll go on your clothes. You're not going to rest here. Come on. Get a hold of this. Oh, wasting good stuff. Come on. Get out of here. Put yourself together. Should we throw a needle over his head and run him out? No, no, no. Wait till closing time. Then get rid of him. Keep your eye on here. Sir, number four! Again, Luke. It's the eyes. But, but, but Luke, why don't you paint a nice jug and some apples like the other fellas? Well, sit down, Michelle. But, but sit down. It'll only take a couple of minutes. But it's always a couple of minutes. Stretch into hours in this blasted chair. One day you'll die, Shell, but this. this picture will live. Luke, Luke, I have important business matters. I know where Johnny McQueen is hiding. I, I, I know where I can lay hands on him. And Lukey, he's hurt bad. He can't move. What's that you say? And I, I, I went to Father Tom, and him and me agreed on terms. Uh, nothing definite, no promises. But you know, a rich thing, a particle or something, very precious. What have you been up to, you sneaking little rat? But, but Lukey, dear, sure, there's hundreds of police out to get Johnny. And where was the wrong in me diddling him out of harm and putting him clean into the gentle palm of the hand of mercy? You. Ah, Lukey, I only asked Father Killing a human uh, being, but, but, eh? Oh, now, Lukey, Lukey, he goes to the right buyer. Oh, and how much did he offer? There was no exact figure, man. Uh, how much? The negotiations was left open for further Liar! I'm going to hit you hard for trying to sell a man who's on the run. Now, Lukey, don't. Now, look, I know where Johnny is at this minute. Let me just first come over to Father Tom. I'm going to hit you hard unless... Unless what? Unless you bring him here for me to paint. Look, that's a desperate thing you're asking me to do. What about his friends? I want to know. Afterwards, you can do what you oh, like but with look, him. Lukey, you'll do what I tell you. It'll take too long. Just a head and shoulders. You see, Shell, dear, there'll be something, something in his eyes. Something more than... But all my failures ah, have. Lukey, I don't know. Don't you? Uh, then I'll break your little I, neck I, I, and lock you in your room. Let go of me now while, while I think. Yes uh, or no? Me, but I want to think over my plans. I forget my dear. yes or no. Well, well, yes, yes, yes. But if Lukey. you don't bring him here, I'll hit you hard where it hurts. Yes. But if you do bring him here, then I may. I may find some good in you after all. Now, look, I'll have everything ready. You do. Shell! I, I, I'm not running any risks for the fun of putting up models for you, me boy. Uh. 
their faces in the fire, Lukey? Hundreds of them, Taylor. Beautiful ones, ugly ones. Smiling, glaring at me. Men and women, one after another, telling me things. Shedding tears. But they don't stay. Oh, Toby, dear. If I could only get just one of them. Go and get yourself a drink, Lukey. Thank you, Taylor. Have a drink. How's business? <sighs> My best bird has flew. Too bad, too bad. Aye, aye. I'm looking for him. And what sort of bird is he? Mr. Fancy, he's hurted. In, uh, in the left wing. Do you think you'll find him in the dark on a wild night like this? I'm halfway to him already. Is that so? Oh, I know rightly where he is at this minute. Why didn't you catch him then? No hurry. No hurry. He's in a corner. Can't get out. What would you do with him if you had him in your fist? You might sell him. He, he's a prize creature. Wounded or sound. Suppose now, just suppose like, you didn't find him at all. What would you do then? I'd go to the police, Mr. Fancy. I see. I wish you luck. Would you uh, give me a hand to get him away? Wait here a minute. Look out. Now it was concerned. Hello, Lukey. How's the art? Still making the paint fly? Ah, listen to them all. Yap, yap, yap. All about a man who committed a murder. The police want him. But you're all afraid of him and of his friends. But I'm not. I'd face him and then I'd look into his eyes. Well, what would you do after that, Lukey? I'd paint him. And it'd all be there, the truth of life and death. Like those Popeyes of yours up there. Ah, that muck. Uh, beer money. Hold on, who are you? What, what do you want? What do you mean? 
people doing here? Who are they, eh? Well, we don't want to interfere with that. You must get him to the hospital. Did I bring this little police cord in my cab? Come on, get out. You're not going to stay here. You're all right, chum. <laughs> oh, you're tired. Hold on, who is in the police I'm car? You're right. cab. Come on, what are these people doing here? Who are they? Eh? I'll wait for you, Johnny. I'm I'll thinking wait. of the decent man he killed. Here we are, come on, man. It's right time. I'll, I'll wait for you, Johnny. There's that little rat. <laughs> Ah, give me a couple of those bottles. Where's the money? That's all right. Put it on my account. Oh, no. I suppose you must be feeling just a little bit tired after all your exertions. Well, the damage will amount to about 25 quid, I should think. Come on. What suggestions have you got to offer? I have no money. No, no money, but plenty of talent for smashing up the place. Well, there's no more to be said. It's the police for you this time, Lukey. On the last occasion when you and your friends suffered a small artistic difference, I forgave you. This time it's a little more serious. I must send for the police. 25 pounds, but... My dear fellow, I'm a painter, not a public. Pay up or go to prison. Well, I'm afraid I'm a little pinched financially at the moment. Then it's six months in jug for you. All right. Have your revenge. Now, I've got a proposition to make. Yes, of course. A couple of my pictures. Now, that will square everything, won't No, it? a better alternative. Oh, so what is it? You'll soon see. The police are my proposition. Make up your mind. Well, I'm afraid I'm too busy at the moment to take a six months holiday in prison. Then it is my proposition? Yes. Joe, go and tell Bill to bring his cab here. Yes. Come over here. Yes. Sam, give us a hand with number one. See what a pretty picture you've painted. Well, he's going to make good that mischief. But it's Johnny. Yes, it's him, all right. How are you? I've ordered a cab for you, and the fellow who drives it won't ask any questions. What do you want me to do with him? Get rid of him. Tip him out somewhere in the dark, away from here. Here's ten bucks for the cab. Now, make up your mind. Now, get him out of here. Sam, give us a hand. It'll be ten years if we're caught. And watch that arm. He's for the road. There's only one road for him, whichever way he goes. Wait here. The street's empty. The cab is here. My bottle. My beer. Outside. See for any police about. Well, Mr. Ben. Yeah. If the police see us, yeah. then open that door. Thank you. Lukey. Come on, outside. All right, all right. All come right. on, come on. Don't you think he ought to have a little brandy for the gin? Outside, go on. Go on, go on. Come on. Go on, get him in there. Go on. Right, be careful with him now. Be come careful. on, then, give us a hand. Go on, get in. Now he up. All right, take it away. Stop! Have you no manners? Go on. When I get you home, I'll give you a drink. And a friend of mine, he'll fix your arm for you. Tober. I'm Tober. Tober. Tober, is, is this serious? Huh? When you were a student in that university in London, you learned about things like this. Look, Tober. Look how I, how I hurt that, huh? No. I, I, I thought I might have been.
fish and chips, huh? Good, good nourishing food, Tober. Near one for poor Shell. Lord, I, I, I am desperate hungry. You're a decent man, Tober. Tober. Tober, a bad thing has happened. You won't be cross like, will you, if I tell you? So you won't, will you? Lukey was terrible cross. Well? Well, I, 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 I found where Johnny McQueen was hiding. Go on. And I, we took and I went to Father Tom. To get to a dirty bit of profit. And so I have to live. So you are foul. Oh, well, Father Tom never said so. He was decent, like. I just told him that I had to live and he sort of agreed with me. Of course, he has, he has no fortune or anything, but he sort of hinted he had something else. It's feet, precious particle, something he is by him. That's where I've lost. It might have glorified your miserable bit of soul. Tober, what does it mean, faith? Only one man had it. I wonder how, how old Father Tom would have given me a bit of it. What is it, Tober? It's life. I got him. It's Johnny. Put him over there by the fire. Oh, no. Bad way. Boil up some water quickly. Clean out a bowl and bring it here, and a piece of carbolic soap. Bring that case from my room. I know. All them silver scissors. Yes. What's this you're up to? Look at him, Toba. All the other people I painted were living. But he's different. He's near death. He sees it. He's dying. I don't need to be told that. There are wonderful thoughts in his eyes. You madman. It won't take long. After I fixed him up, he's going straight to hospital. But you know who he is, don't you? All the same, if he gets there soon, he might live. You might say his life is lost already. Of my concern. Patching up his body just so that he can be tried and then executed. I can't help what happens to him later. There's more to be considered than the body, Toba. That may be dying, but the soul is still alive. Toba, are you, are you going to operate? Bring the hot water, fetch a clean towel from the cupboard. Uh, have you got the stuff that makes the smell in hospitals? Get those things. And uh, you'll keep out of the light, won't you, Toba? Why do you want to do this? Because, Toba, there's something to be said about him before he dies. And about all of us. I can see it, Toba. Take care. You might find something you don't understand that'll frighten you. I understand what I see in him. What is it? It's the truth about us all. Is that all? He's doomed. So are we all. Is he really dying, Tober? We're all dying. But could you, could you not fix him up so that he could walk home? Like, of course, I'd see him safe along the road. Maybe I'd go with him. Shell, in my room there's some brandy. Bring it. Aye, that'll give him the strength. Inspector, where will I go? You stay here. I'll see him downstairs. Hello, Fred. Oh, Father, 
I just wanted to have a few words with you. I have a visitor upstairs. Do you mind coming into the vestry? Thank you. I know what you've come to talk about. Then you know it's a serious matter, Father. Johnny McQueen's doings. That and because the woman Catherine Sullivan was seen entering your house. There's nothing against her, surely. In the eyes of the law, she's a dangerous woman. I've been listening to her. She's been asking you where to find Johnny McQueen. That's a crime? A serious one, Father. Tell me this. From your experience of men and women, would you say they're all bad? In my profession, Father, there is neither good nor bad. There is innocence and guilt. That's all. I've seen the bad in them. And we condemn that, and rightly, too. But what do we do when we find something that is good in them? Shouldn't we recognize that? I know what you're trying to tell me, Father. This woman loves McQueen. She can't find him, so she comes to you to ask you to help her to find him. It's like all the people here, they expect me to do miracles. Father, I have my duty to do. Where is this man, McQueen? Out there somewhere amidst the stones of the city. Is that all you have to tell me, Father? You all come asking my assistance. But I wanted to see this man for a very good reason. Why? You might think this strange, but I wish I could have seen him before his arrest. I wanted so much to comfort him. That isn't unreasonable, Father. But you can't do that unless he's coming here. of the streets around here watched. And this time, Father, don't interfere. Oh, I, I wasn't interfering. I was only just wondering if there mightn't be a little mercy. I'm sorry, Father, but it's my duty to bring this man to justice. That's the duty of all of us. Father, it might be better if that young woman stayed here with you for a while. You understand. I don't. The young lady left a few minutes ago. She said she couldn't stay. Where did she go? She didn't say. It's time you were in bed, Father. Wait a little longer. It's only 11. Do you expect the tide to wait for him? It's trapping fast. By midnight, the ship will be grounded. He'll be at Father Tom's any minute now. If you get him here by midnight, I'll do what I can for you. But I can't do a thing after that. I'll get him before then. great doctor, Tober, if only you'd finished your studies. You'd have had the top hat and fine clothes and a big house and the rich customers coming to you to be cured. And, and you wouldn't have to get out of bed until maybe ten in the morning when the streets would be sort of aired. Easy now, easy. He's ready for hospital now. Look here. Give me a hand with him. He'd better rest a bit longer. You, you daren't move him yet. He must have a blood transfusion. What good will that do? We'll store him and it might save his life. But he's not fit to be moved. You and your infernal paintings. Get him a brandy, can't you? You can have him there while the life dribbles out of him. The pot call in the kettle black. You fellas are not caring a pin about him. Yammering about his body and his soul. He has an immortal soul. He must go to hospital. That's uncivilized. Make up your mind about him quick. I'm not going to stand any nonsense from, from you fe fellas. Do you think I dressed his wounds and got him comfortable just so that you could stand there and paint him? You only fixed him up so that when you get him to the hospital, you'll be proud of what you've done. You're drunk. Listen, if he dies... Give him peace to do it in then. And what will we do with him if he does? What will we tell the police? Stop arguing. You've done what you wanted to do. Now let me. I will not allow him to sit there and die in that chair. Please talk about his life. Aren't you telling me that you're going to hand him over to him? Yes, to me. Who he yeah. When he's fit, they'll pass him on to the police. Yes, and the police will put him up for trial. You expect me to hide him? I tell you, he should stay here. Look at him, Tola. It won't take him much longer. Get him rest. He needs it. Can't you see? What I should have you 
life. Have you ever heard of Father Tom? Come on. No, leave him. Don't take him away until I... Father Tom. Listen, if he dies, he's going to do it in there. And what can we do with him if he does? What can we tell him? Where is he? Stop arguing. You've done what you wanted to do. Now let me. I will not allow him to sit there and die in that chair. You needn't talk about his life. Aren't you telling me that you're going to hand him over to the police? Tell me, Father. Like he used to tell us. Maybe. And the police will put him up for trial. Do you expect me to hide him? I tell you, he should stay here. Louder, Father. Speak louder. I can't hear you. Let him rest. He needs it. Can't you see? What I see has life. Well, it belongs to him, not to you. Now, come on. No, leave him. Look. We've always drowned your voice with our shouting, haven't we, Father? We never really listened to you. We repeated the words without thinking what they meant. But I remember... When I was a boy, I remember when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. He's out of his mind. He's delirious. I'm going to fetch an ambulance. Well, Father Tom is waiting for you. And there's a young lady named Kathleen with him. Could you get as far as Father Tom's if I gave you a hand? As I was saying, and this fella, he said to me, he said, if you bring the board round to me next week, says he, uh, Johnny, come on. Johnny, come on. Come on. It's all right, Johnny. Come on, it's all right.
Johnny, Johnny, listen to me. You stay here. I'll, I'll get past the police, and I'll, I'll bring Father Tony in. Stay there, Johnny. It's a hardy old night, Sergeant. Where we couldn't get any further. Well, come on, take me oh, there. Now, no, no, Miss, the police, they're all around. Don't oh, wait. But you're looking, I have to leave a message with Father Tom. Will you tell Father Tom we've gone to the square? Ah, oh, that's right. You tell Tom. Busted. She went on. Which way? I couldn't keep up with her, but we'll get her now.
It's a long way, Johnny. But I'm coming with you. We are going away together. when we had to fire back. Welcome back. You know, I love that part where the camera zooms in on that sign and it says no jitter bugging and then zooms down to the dance floor and everyone is doing just that. <laughs> that was a popular dance at the time. It was called the jitter bug. <laughs> now, we had some great stellar photography in this film and great directing I mean you know with the low angles and the high contrast lighting I mean now the the director here was Carol Reed and in fact it, later on he won the Oscar for best director for 1968's Oliver and in tonight's picture the director of photography was Robert Krasker, and I think they did a stellar job here. Now, James Mason, and he's the one playing Johnny, I hit some of his bio back when I brought you the upturned glass. But just to hit the highlights here, uh, he was born in Huddersfield, County Yorkshire, England. It's kind of in north central England, so, so it's well north of London. But uh, he began his film career in the mid-1930s. But by the mid-1940s, that is when he gained his fame, uh, appearing in lead roles for films with Gainsborough Pictures, uh, starring in melodramas. Uh, that was really kind of got his fame. And of course, tonight's was certainly a breakout film. Now. Among, he came here to the United States in 1949, started making films here. Among his notables, uh, my favorite movies of his were his war movies. Uh, he was in The Desert Fox, also The Desert Rats, in, yeah, similar titles, but in both films he played the, uh, played the role of the famous German general Erwin Rommel. But he was also in Torpedo Bay, and my personal favorite, probably my all-time, not just war movie, but all-time favorite movie of any genre, he was in 1966's The Blue Max. He was in that with George Pappard and Ursula Andress. Ursula Andress. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm telling you. Now... So among his other, other than his war films, his other notable films, he was in Julius Caesar, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Journey to the Center of the Earth, 
North by Northwest, that was a Hitchcock film, and Lolita, which <laughs> Lolita, that was a pretty famous, uh, for its era, a very risque film. Now, uh, he and his wife, uh, Pamela Colino, and she was an actress in her own right, and she appeared in many of James's films. Uh, they had two children, a daughter, Portland, and a son, Morgan, who, in 1986, married Belinda Carlisle, who we all remember as the lead singer of the all-girls pop group, The Go-Go's. <laughs> yeah, his son married Belinda Carlisle. So, but, now, if you like old pictures like this, you know, these old types of movies, remember, click on the subscribe button down here. You'll be notified of future releases up here in the notification bell. And you can always just click on the Full Moon Matinee icon down here, or just type Full Moon Matinee in the search bar, and you can find all of the prior releases. And, as always, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood and the United Kingdom. Now be sure to have a fun St. Patrick's Day, and until next time.